Hello, my name is Lisa Whitehouse and I'm the artist behind Whitehouse Art. For today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to paint this cute and colorful clownfish using watercolors. For a full list of everything you need to get started, be sure to check out the video description below and hit the like button if you enjoyed painting along with me and be sure to hit subscribe if you want to see other videos just like this one. Let's get started. So we're going to start by sketching out the fish and like all my paintings, I like to draw a loose shape of where I want it to go to start. So with the fish, we can kind of draw an oval shape so that we get a basic idea of how big we want it to be on the page. So I know that I want it to be about that big and then have the tail like that. All right, so once I have a loose idea of it, now I can go in and start adding the actual shape. And for this layer, I do it a little bit darker. So we're gonna start, I think the mouth is gonna go a little bit further out and then it raises up and down. And we want it to actually be a little bit longer than I originally drew. So then I'm gonna go up like that for the tail. And they have a fairly small tail. And I'll just draw a small mouth here. And then another chin down here. My clownfish is fairly chubby. So about right here, they have a fin that comes out and goes under. And then we come up and meet up for the tail. All right, then we can add the little, I think it's called a dorsal fin, although you're welcome to correct me if I'm wrong, in the back. And then we'll draw an eye right about here. And then the first white line. And I believe all of the different markings on the clownfish are different, so it's okay if yours don't look exactly like mine. Draw a little fin here. And then the other white marking. comes around and then another one right about here and then last but not least we'll draw the back one which has a black stripe on it and then we're gonna have to draw these fins right here so we have one that comes up about pretty close to this front white one and it heads to the back comes down and then gets bigger and comes down again all right, so once I'm all done sketching that out, I go ahead and I erase all the lines that I don't want anymore, or I lighten some of the lines that are too dark. But because this is a tutorial, I'm gonna keep the lines fairly dark so that you guys can see where I'm working. But with watercolors, it's important to not have too dark of lines on the page because they will show through. And it's a lot harder to erase them after than it is to erase them at the beginning. So I like to work with the faintest outline on the page. So now we're ready to start adding some color and I wanna keep my white parts fairly light, but I do wanna add a little bit of color in them. So I'm gonna take my dagger brush and what I'm gonna do is add some water on the page and I'm gonna do it very loosely. So here where the white appears, I'm going to go ahead and add some clear water, but I'm gonna have that clear water kind of come up and come around the fish. So it's gonna bleed out from that white spot. I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom. And I'm gonna work my way around and fill in all the white spots for now. And you're welcome to work one at a time, but you can also do them all as long as you get them fairly wet because the paints do dry quickly. So this one, I'm gonna have it come out and then come around and under. And you're wanting these shapes to be fairly organic, meaning that they flow really smoothly, no straight lines and then the back of the fish. And then I'll show you what happens when we start adding some teal in, is we'll just drop some in. And because I added clear water first, it's not gonna stay in the lines, and that's what I want. I want it to kind of bleed out. We still want it to look fairly light, so you don't wanna to add too much color at this step. 
but the white parts are never truly white, so it's nice to have a little bit of teal dropped in there. And then what I'm gonna do is go around and where I did water on the outside, so you can see that this represents the water surrounding the fish. And I can be a little bit heavier handed with this part because I want the whites to stay fairly light, but around the fish, I want you to really be able to see it. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it bleed off the page. So I'm gonna lift the page up and then kind of direct where I want it to go. So it looks like the water's kind of dripping behind the fish. And sometimes I just let the paint bleed where I want it to, but for this one, I'm gonna have it a little bit more directed. Then what I'm gonna do is take my flat brush, put a little bit of that teal on it, and do some splatters around the fish. And you can get a little bit loose with this. Don't worry too much about being fussy about where those splatters end up. We're wanting this part to look like water spilled on the page. That's the best way I can describe it. So sort of the more you have, the bigger they are, the more it's gonna look like water just sort of dropped on the page. And that's about where we want that first layer to end up. So I'm gonna let this dry 100% and then I'll go back and show you the next layer. So now that the first layer's had a chance to dry, we can start working on the next layer, which is the orange. With watercolors, I do tend to work lighter to darker, just because if I did the black first, then when I went ahead and butted up the orange to it, the black would bleed into the orange. So we always kind of want to be mindful of that when planning out a painting. So I'm going to fill in the orange spots with clear water. And then I'm going to go over top and add a small amount of orange and just kind of drop it in and let it make its way around using the clear water that I put in. We will help define these areas a little bit more with the black at the end. But as I mentioned, this part is just about getting in some of that orange. And if it's not bleeding a lot, you can go ahead and add a little clear water to help it along. Next, we'll do the middle section. And I'll head up to the fin here as well. And I'm doing quite a bit at once in terms of I'm not defining the areas just yet. So I'm gonna go around, fill in this fin, and then I'll add some differentiation between the fin and the rest of it, the body, after. So I'm gonna go around where the white part is. Same with up here. And it is drying fairly quick, quickly today. Find the humidity and the space you're working in does affect how quickly it dries and how much water you put down, of course. I almost never work outside with watercolors because I find that they dry way too quickly. I don't know if you guys have had that same experience or if you do find that you can work outside, but I find it frustrating when the sun dries it so fast that you can't keep up. So I'm gonna take a little bit of red and I'm gonna drop a little bit of red in here. And then I'm gonna drop in a little bit of pink down here. And I'll keep moving back. And this is that stage in the painting where you might not be too happy with it. Looks a little bit messy, but I promise you if you stick with me, We'll clean it up at the end. I'm keeping the page fairly wet. My brush is in rough shape. I've left it in the water too many times, so it's got a little scraggly hair on it. It's making lines, but that's okay. I'm just gonna roll with it and try and be careful. It's important with brushes not to leave them in the water too much, but it does happen once in a while. I'm gonna take some yellow and just drop it up here. I'm gonna drop some up here as well. 
Sometimes when I decide to add a new color, I make sure that I have it all over the painting so that it's not appearing just once. I'm gonna drop in a little bit of red here and then darken some of these red spots. And because it's not bleeding a lot, I just add a bit of clear water and it'll move around more. Then we're gonna go to the back. We got see here that I didn't do a spot white that I should have but that's okay I'm gonna go with it so much of watercolors is about readjusting and changing perhaps what you plan to go with because with watercolors you can't really erase them you can try a little bit to lift some of the color out but oftentimes you just have to run with it And so this area was supposed to be white, but I'm just gonna make my orange part a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna add in a bit of red along here. And just throw that red in elsewhere as well, again. All right, so we'll let this dry now and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now that the layer of orange has had a chance to dry, we're gonna go in and add a little bit more detail with the orange. For this, I'm going to use my liner brush, and instead of doing wet in wet, which is adding clear water first, we're gonna go straight in with the orange and the red, and perhaps some pink as well, to add a bit of detail. So first things first, I'm gonna take some orange and go around the eye. So we're just gonna add a little bit of shading where the eye will go, and let that start to dry, because we're gonna wanna go in and add the detail right away there. I'm gonna add some on the top, Basically everywhere where it connects the white, we're probably gonna add a little bit of shading. Along the bottom, I'm gonna use a little bit of red here too. You can see this layer is just all about adding some details. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of red in here with the orange. And you can add some shapes too that look like a little bit like um, scales. So having your brush kind of move around in circles. So it has a bit of a scaled pattern. That's also good. We're just adding a little bit of detail around the white to help direct, differentiate a little bit more. And then under here, we're gonna have it even darker. And then I'm going to take some orange and just fan it out. And then for this one, I'll add a bit of red. You can see I'm just kind of making my way around and close to the white, I'm defining it a little bit more. And because there's orange underneath, even when you place the red, it's still going to have an orange hue to it. So that's good. Adding a few lines. And then we're gonna take some orange and draw some lines on the fins. When we add that black, it'll help crisp it up just a little bit. A few lines here. Some lines back here and then I'll add a little bit of red in with those a little bit down here all right so now we can go in and start adding the black and I'm just gonna be mindful at the beginning to let some of these wet spots dry as we add that black so I'm using my liner brush and using various pressure I'm gonna kind of work along the areas where I want black. So up here, I will add some. And we know that it's dry back here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of lines, but nothing too strong and dark. And then this one, I'll make it quite a bit thicker. And I lift and put pressure on the brush to add varying thickness. 
so that these lines aren't just solid lines. What you don't want is to have a perfectly smooth line. That's not how the fishtail looks, so we gotta be mindful of that. And I'm gonna add some differentiation in the water, but not completely. We'll allow some of it to kind of bleed out. So then we'll add some black here because we know we don't have any wet paint here, but I'm kind of skipping around the page. So depending where yours is dry, you can always just let it dry fully and then you don't have to worry about it. Um, depending on where it's dry, you can kind of move around. So I'm gonna add a little bit of lining here. And it, the black will lighten as it dries, so just be mindful of that. You want to do get get it quite dark the first time so that you don't have to go over it. So now I'm going to add a line here. Mostly all of the white spots should have black around them. That's how the clownfish looks. And those lines are fairly uneven. So as I said, I just kind of vary the pressure on the brush. But I don't want to outline the whole fish, so I'm just kind of lightly going over them. And work up to here. And then this fin has some black on it too, so it's a fairly thin black on the bottom and top. And then actually it gets fairly thick right around here. And actually that even is a little too smooth for me. I wanna just break it up a bit. So you can see now that it's coming together a lot more. I find adding this black really helps define what it is a lot more. Now that that's dry, I can go in and add some lines there. Just go over some of these. I wanna make sure they're nice and dark. Cause I feel that pop of black really adds to it, so. Being mindful of getting it nice and strong is good. Now we're just gonna do a little bit on the eye. I'm gonna draw a few lines around it just to keep it, bring the attention to that eye. But we're almost at the finish line. I can see it kind of coming together now. You can continue to add detail if you like. Depends how detailed you want your fish to be. I'm gonna keep mine fairly loose. I can see on the reference photo that I'm using that there's a little bit of fanning right here. But I think that looks fairly good. So now for the last step, I'm just gonna go in and add a few more splatters in the background. So we're gonna add some blue over top of the blue that's already there. And then I'm gonna go in and add a little bit of orange splatters on the fish itself that kind of go outside of the fish. We don't wanna to have too many. We're wanting it to still feel fairly blue in the background, but I thought a few would be nice. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sign it and it's all done. So as I mentioned before, if you don't mind hitting the subscribe button, I'd love to show you more videos just like this one and hit the like button if you enjoyed painting along with me. Thank you so much for watching.